This is indeed a use for peanuts. Peanut butter cookies are an iconic cookie, thanks in large part to the decorative crosshatch that always seems to adorn them. But peanut butter cookies didn't always have such a well-defined look. It seems that the crosshatch wasn't really a thing until 1932, when a recipe was published in the Schenectady Gazette and instructed the home baker to shape into balls and after placing them on the cookie sheet, press each one down with a fork, first one way and then the other, so they look like squares on waffles. But plenty of recipes for peanut cookies or peanut butter cookies had been published prior to 1932 without mentioning the unique pattern. Mrs. Rohrer, a well-known food writer of the early 1900s, published a recipe for peanut wafers in 1902 that made no mention of the pattern. Nor did the recipe from Jesse Woodrow Wilson, the president's daughter, that was published in the Saskatoon Phoenix in 1913. And George Washington Carver, who was perhaps one of the most prolific creators of peanut cookie recipes, never mentioned the pattern either. Carver actually published three different recipes for peanut cookies in his 1916 pamphlet, How to Grow the Peanut and 105 Ways of Preparing It for Human Consumption. George Washington Carver is famous for inventing a large number of uses for peanuts, and for being one of the first well-known black scientists. But have you ever wondered why Carver created so many uses for the peanut? It wasn't just because he loved peanuts. After earning his master's degree in agricultural science from Iowa State Agricultural College, he accepted an offer from Booker T. Washington to become the director of the Department of Agriculture at the Tuskegee Institute. Upon his move to the Deep South, he noted that the farmers in the South were planting cotton in their fields over and over again, and that the quality of the soil was deteriorating. The cotton was stripping the soil of its nutrients like nitrogen, which meant the crop yield was suffering. So he encouraged farmers to rotate their cotton crop with peanuts and soybeans, which would replenish the nitrogen in the soil and improve the quality. Apparently, he was so committed to teaching farmers about better agricultural practices that he even took a horse-drawn laboratory around to the local farms to demonstrate soil chemistry. He called it the Jessup Wagon. Farmers began to follow Carver's instructions and their soil quality improved, and they were rewarded with a more bountiful harvest of cotton. But as a side effect, they also ended up with a whole lot of peanuts. Carver, who was on a seemingly never-ending quest to help poor Southern farmers, decided to take on this new challenge as well. And in the process, he discovered 300 uses for the humble peanut. From laundry soap, to axle grease, to peanut cookies thus earning him the nickname, The Peanut Man. Today I want to put one of his recipes to the test, peanut cookies number one. It seems pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and get started. The recipe calls for one and a half cups of ground peanuts. So I'm just gonna use my mortar and pestle to try to grind up some peanuts and see how it works. Ground enough, I guess? All right. I think that looks like it's pretty well ground. It's not quite like a peanut butter, but it looks like maybe a really dry, chunky peanut butter. So I think we're gonna try this and see how it works. So we're gonna add half a cup of butter and one cup of sugar, and then cream them together with the paddle attachment of our stand mix. So now I'm just going to add two eggs that I've beaten well with a whisk. First, I'm going to add one full cup of flour. Once the flour has just been mixed in a little bit, I'm going to add a third of a cup of milk, roughly. Now another cup of flour. Another third a cup of milk. Then the last cup of flour. and the last third of milk. So the recipe includes a teaspoon of baking powder, but the instructions don't actually say when to add it in. It's probably supposed to be added in with the flour, but I haven't done that, so let's just go ahead and do that now. Just give that a quick mix. <laughs> and it's interesting, it doesn't actually list vanilla in the ingredients, but it says flavor to taste with vanilla. So we're gonna add some vanilla to this too. Maybe a little more. So, this is the last thing. We'll add the peanuts. It's about a one and a half cup. All right, 
right, I've got my prepared cookie sheet. I've got my prepared cookie mixture. And now the recipe just says drop one spoonful to the cookie in well-greased pans. I didn't grease my pan, I lined it with parchment paper because that's what I prefer. But you can do whatever you want to do. So I've taken my cookies out of the oven and it's time for the taste test. I don't think I would call this a peanut butter cookie. It definitely tastes like a cookie. It tastes like there's some peanuts in it. it doesn't taste like peanut butter. Which is fair because the the title of the recipe is peanut cookie, not peanut butter cookie, but it would not be my go-to cookie for most things. It doesn't taste bad. It just tastes a little bland. Maybe it needs some more salt. I don't think I would try these again. <laughs> Maybe it's just not sweet enough? I don't think there's enough of any flavor. There's not enough sweetness, there's not enough peanuts, there's not enough salt. There's a lot of different things that could be adjusted here. But next time I want peanut butter cookies or peanut cookies, I'd probably go with a different recipe. Well, this recipe is over 100 years old and it was written by a scientist who was simply trying to compile as many uses for peanuts as he could. And I can say that this is indeed a use for peanuts. Although it probably isn't my favorite. There's certainly nothing wrong with the recipe. The cookies aren't bad, but they probably aren't a recipe that you'd go back to again and again. I think we just need to punch the flavors up a little bit more. But hey, maybe peanut cookies number two and three are better. All in all, George Washington Carver made some impressive contributions to science, and he invented some great uses for peanuts. Even if this recipe wasn't the most impressive, I hope that you've learned something new about him through this recipe. And if you did, leave me a comment down below. And I'll see you next time. Nope, not my favorite.